Good afternoon, everyone. It's Robin Carter with Robin's Creations, and I'm out of Flower Mound, Texas, and I'm here today to share my first alternates with you. Uh, if you missed the unboxing of this kit, which is the Ho 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 Paper Pumpkin Kit for October 2022, uh, you can find that in my channel. Click on my channel and go to videos, and you will see all of my uh, videos, including the unboxing of this kit. So as I mentioned with this kit, I wanted to do uh, some alternates making gift card holders. So this is the first thing I have for you today. This middle card was one of my favorites. So um, that's what I, I wanted to leave it like a card, but make it like a gift card. So let me get my components out and we will start. Uh, I'll show you how I made this into a gift card. If you are new to my channel, I would really appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button below and check out my previous paper pumpkin videos with all the other kits I've received. And you will, if you ring the bell for notifications, you will get a no notification when I post my next alternates with this kit. To those of you who have already subscribed, thank you so much for your subscription. And I hope you like this video and find some inspiration of ways to use your kit. So let me get started with that. So one of my favorite layouts for making gift cards out of a card is this layout right here. So as you can see, I can tuck the card here. If you have a horizontal card, you can tuck it like that. So I'm going to get my scoring board out. So I like to score first and cut once to, when I'm making more than one card. So for this card, you're going to want to score it as usual at the five and a half. I use the skinny thing, five and a half, and I go carefully so I don't jump tracks. And then you'll also want to do it at two inches. Okay, so I'm going to actually if you want it to fold correctly, you'd probably actually flip it over and then do two. It doesn't really matter on the scoring card part, uh, the gift card part. So I'm going to come to this side here and I'm going to cut it in half. Oh, excuse me. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so in case that wasn't on the screen, score this way at five and a half and then again at two. And for the uh, proper fold as far as it goes, the mountain fold, you would want to flip it over. So I'm going to come to the side here and I'm going to trim it in half at four and a quarter. And this just makes your standard A2 card. So I can put that away. And what I meant about the fold, so this is where I scored it, right? I know you probably cannot see it. And you'll want to fold, so when I press down, it made this. You'll fold it so that the mountain is on the inside. So let me burnish that. And I do use a thick white for my card bases. I'm going to go ahead and do this one the same. Fold it in. Okay, and then to make our gift card, where I scored here at two inches, fold that in. That looks really big. I think that's going to be right. Let me compare it to my other one. You could really make that any fold that you want. Yes, two inches. I did this one two inches. And let me burnish this one in. I like to do my bone folder, which that's off the edge here rather than pointed in so I don't make any additional marks on my card. Okay, so this is our two cards and this is going to be our gift folder, gift card holder, but I want to make a little notch. Now you can make any notch you want to, uh, a circle, you could manually cut it if you don't have a circle punch. But I have this lovely, uh, label me lovely punch, and I thought it would make a pretty indention. So I'm just going to stick it in here. 
if you want to be exact in the center you can get your ruler and then just mark a two and an eighth inch mark that's going to be half of four and a quarter and then when you lay when you put that in there this this punch has a notch right in the center a little I don't know point <laughs> so I can kind of line that up but you get as much of the detail as you want and I try to get it centered from left to right and then just punch so that leaves a nice decor decorative uh, place to put your gift card in okay so let me go ahead and do both cards do it again if you want less no, I didn't mark the center of this one, did I? Again, you can just eyeball it, but I'm showing you. If you're a perfectionist, then you can work on that. And you can even, we'll, we'll do this one a little less. All right, so I'm lining it up there. And then I punch. Okay, so that just, that left a littler notch for your gift card. Okay, so as I said, I really like the design of the Santa flying across the sky. Here is one I've done, and we will do um, we'll do another one. So these how so we're gonna put Santa flying in the sky first. So let me get out my stamparatus, set these aside. And this is one of the favorite stamp sets from this kit. My scoring board is in the way of my stamparatus. So, okay. So I have already kind of laid all my stamps on the stamparatus. So my Santa Claus and his reindeer are here. I'm going to get this piece. And as you can see, well, it's hard to see because I've had my Mary there. I kind of wanted him going up into the sky. You could freehand this, but I really like using my Stamparatus because on this stamp, I want a really dark impression. So I'm going to get my Memento ink. Ink that up real well. I need a... I need a stamp set to stick under here. That'll help make it more flat. And they stick to that case when I when I have stamps on them. So let's see how dark this is. Sometimes I have to do two. Give it a second to let the ink soak in. That's actually good on the first one. So I'm going to use my lovely paper towel. And this, I've shared this in the past, but in case this is your first video. So here in Texas, it can be hot and fans going and all such. So to keep my uh, Simply Chamois, which is this is the full chamois cut in half and then this half cut in half again, I leave a damp paper towel on top. And that just helps my... Uh, chamois not dry out so fast when I'm crafting. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and do my other one. Put that there so I don't lose it. And always, if you have this uh, deluxe mat or just the black one, make sure it's always in the corner. Mine tends to slide. I don't know if that's user error <laughs> or what, but before I stamp, I always, especially if I've had it already lined up, make sure it's in the corner. Now, if you have trouble getting a solid image on these type of stamps, um, take a white eraser. Thought I had one to show you, but you know what I'm talking about. Just not a pink one. Um, if I find one, 
find it, I'll show you. But it's just a white one. The other thing you can do, and I'm gonna do this one again, just cause I see a little spot right there. The other thing you could do is ink it up with your Versamark ink first. And that would help the, uh, the ink to stick to your stamp. I hope I'm not shaking the camera with my pressing. I'm trying to be more mindful of that. <laughs> okay, that's a nice solid black image. So let me clean him off again. I get the ink and then I go with my chamois. All right. So that's our reindeer. Put the cover on my black. Now my downline, she was the one that uh, helped come up with this. She said, I wanted Santa flying over the houses. So that's what we're gonna do with these two. And I have been a demonstration straighter for about 15 years but in my first few years I enjoyed when they had the my digital studio and so I had this from holiday home so these little houses if you get my add-on kit I will cut these for you and they will be in your add-on kit and Let's see, I should have the other one already in here, but I wanted to share with you in case you don't get my kit, <laughs> which is fine, that um, if you have been around a long time, there was this punch. Let me get all the goodies. And it can be a house. So I'm going to show you, you know, you can kind of do that and then just take a strip of, um, this was called the What's Up Punch. It's a holdy. Anyway, you could take the house, and again, I just wanted the rooftop, so I kind of cut him small, and then you can get a little piece of scrap. I'll set it here so you can see it, and make a chimney. Now, if you don't have that punch, you could easily cut two squares, cut one square in half along the angle there, and make a rooftop. And then just any scrap of black would make your houses. So there's just some other alternatives you can do. I really liked these houses. He has a little fuzzy. So I'm going to use these. Now I think I had some. So when I cut these with my stamp, uh, excuse me, my scan and cut, I use some adhesive to help it go. Oh. And there's the white eraser. So this is the kind of white eraser I use on my solid stamps to help them uh, the ink to ink to stick. Let's see if I put the other house in here. I had on. Well, we'll just go with this one and flip him over. Kind of had them different heights just so they didn't look so obvious all right so i'm going to stick these down to my card base while i look for the other little houses see i know i cut them <laughs> all right so i'm going to get my tombow liquid glue that i have put into a Fine tip glue bottle, wherever he disappeared to. Always. There he is. I always lose something. So I'm going to stick him down to the bottom. Actually, I should probably do him first. So let me do him first since I have. I can put him in the center. So I center this. On my stamp apparatus, so the one and a half is right at the inch mark. Oops, don't move. Well, now I need more glue. Let 
All right, so I want to stick this house right in the center. All right, and then I'm going to center these best, kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect between the rest of the gap. Now I want this house to look a little different, so I'm going to trim the bottom off of him. Get my, I'm going to use my cutter over here that's on the side. Just cut a little, just a little bit off him so he doesn't look quite the same house. All right. Okay, so there's our houses, the shadow of our houses, just like Santa. Now, on this card, you can choose whether you would want to mat them. This is Bermuda Bay cardstock. But when I was making the other one, I really liked the black. So I made a mat of black to put these on. And I miscut that. <laughs> That's how that works for a video, doesn't it? So both of those. Um, so let me get out some black cardstock and redo that. As it says, you should measure twice, cut once. So that's three. So I want this to be three and a quarter. And this one is a little bigger than 375. I'm just going to go ahead and make that four. I could make it four and an eighth. Let's try that. See if that's closer. Okay, four and an eighth. And again, that's a little over three, so I might do three and an eighth here. If it's too big, we'll trim it down again. Better to be too big than too small. What did I do wrong? So I hope this happens to everybody else because it just um, is not working. Am I reading that wrong? Oh, because I did what I did before. I cut it exactly that. All right, so if it's three and eight, I'll need three eighths. Okay, so kind of better. It's kind of a big border, but I like that. It's not too big. So I think for the next one, I will go four by three and a quarter. All right, I like to use liquid glue on that so I can kind of move it around. So I think it's centered on my mat piece, which it looks like it is. All right, so let me move this to the side. Move this. All right, so we have our card base here. And so you want to fold this like this. I don't know, that card has a little bump on it, but that's okay. And the interesting thing is, if you did it to four, it would actually fit that way if you like it that way. But I wanted this to hang off the side like that. So, but you know me, I wanted a little more detail to my card. So I took the 3D embossing cold folders called Wintry and used this little snowflake pattern. Does that show up? on white. So I'm going to adhere that to my card. Now if you don't have embossing folders or a uh, die cut and emboss machine, you could make a piece with just a little snowflake stamp that came in the kit and put him down. But I actually did prefer the wintry so that's what I wanted to use. Get that centered. 
And this, I, I give it a little press to help the glue to spread around. But as you can see here, you could also do the snowflakes if that's all you had. I like to give um, different solutions in case you don't have um, a bunch of supplies because paper pumpkin kits are meant to be simple and everything is included for you. So I just like to give those alternate ideas. Same thing with the houses. You can just cut a square and make a rooftop. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to go ahead and put this one here. Oops, try not to wiggle the table so I don't make you dizzy. So I'm going to put this back in here. Now we have our two cards and I'm just going to finish one. So down here, I did like to add a little detail. So we're going to make that the same. And this one is 4.25 by, let me measure this, one and five eighths. Okay, so we're going to need our Stamparatus back out. I already have these set up. on my Stamparatus, so I wanted to say Merry Christmas. And like this card, I like how the Christmas shows, but the Merry is covered up. That was just a happy accident, so that's why we're gonna glue this on last to cover that. So I have my Merry here. I've used all sides of my plate here. Let me hold that down. And I'm going to use Bermuda Bay ink on that, on the Mary. I'm going to ink it up really good. So, and I've shared this before too, but all my Paper Pumpkin subscribers get a one inch square of ink because it's best if you store them upside down. Looks like I may have to do that one again. I can see already. I think the magnet was holding it a little bit up. There, that feels like better pressure. So I'm gonna ink it again. And it will it will be pretty dark, but once it dries, it'll lighten up a little bit. There we go. And then I want Christmas below. So it's on this side of my plate. And I've already centered those up. And for this, I'm gonna use Cherry Cobbler. Now, if you do not have Cherry Cobbler, I do know it's coming in the next month's kit, the November kit. So be sure to subscribe to that kit. And if you, do not have a demonstrator that you're subscribed under, I will put a link below in the description of this video of how to subscribe with me as your demonstrator. I gotta put that magnet out of the way of, whoop, Santa Claus. All right, and just give it a good press and let this ink soak into your paper. I'm gonna do him again. So he's nice and solid. That's the beauty of the Stamparatus. It will be in the same spot, hopefully. I should have checked to make sure it was in the corner again. You know, and that's kind of poopy, isn't it? It was too much ink there. So luckily, lucky for you, I cut two of those because I know things like to mess up on my videos. I can do it perfectly five times on my own, but for some reason, when I make a video, it just messes up. So we're gonna try that again with the Cherry Cobbler. I'll just try to get it really good the first time. I did re-ink my spot too, so it should be good. All right, Christmas. So 
little blotchy still, so I'm going to lightly ink it. That way I don't get a bunch of G. Okay, much better. Thank you, Stamp, for working better this time. And now I need my chamois. It fell on the floor, so it's all awry. Now I happen to have this old stamp cleaning pad. So it doesn't bother me that much because I'm sure I'll probably always use that on the red. But I thought since I have it, I will use it until it's dry. And then that stuff you want to clean off right away. So I'm just going to use my same towel. Try to use a corner. As you see, it gets it pretty clean. But the staining does not hurt your stamps. And if you clean it well, you will not get any transfer from that pink. So no worries on that. So now let's do our Mary. I want to do Christmas first. In case I mess up again. Looks like I didn't clean Mary. Okay, and this Mary is in Bermuda Bay. Looks like I inked it well, so I hopefully won't have to do it again. Okay, that's a good Mary. I'm just going to wipe him off with my wet paper towel. Stick him back in there. Chamois. Okay, and then I wanted to add a little detail to this by stamping the snowflakes. So we have snowflakes in this month's kit. Let me show you the stamp set. Here's my holder that I also make for all of my Paper Pumpkin subscribers. So that they can keep their stamps separate and get a collection of stamps. So we have a snowflake and stars. I liked the snowflakes. So I'm going to get my Bermuda Bay. Now here's another reason why I like the deluxe mat. Because you can stamp off of it. And then just wipe it up when you're done. Just going to put three on each side. Okay, so that looks good. If you want to add more, just going to do it off the top up here. It looks like it's snowing all over. Put some off the bottom, why not? Okay. And now you can just get a wet paper towel and wipe off your deluxe mat and it comes clean. Okay, back to the card. I don't think we need this anymore. I do, we will have to do a Santa, so I'm just going to set it to the side. So for our card, I have the um, wintry 3D embossing folder on there. And so this, I wanted to mat with some Bermuda Bay. So I have a scrap of Bermuda Bay here that is not, I must have cut it wrong the last time I used it. Let me grab another scrap of Bermuda Bay. I'm batting a thousand on this video, aren't I? All right, let me see if any of these are four and a quarter. Not that one. So that one's a little bit. I'll just trim it. So here's my uh, cardstock saving trip. Rather than measuring this, I'm just going to, uh, I know it's four and a quarter wide. So I'm going to trim that off. And then I'm going to do like five eighths of an inch strips. And 
And so that way I can just mount this with the amount of border I want. So I'm going to get my Tombow again. And this is where the liquid glue really helps. Is I've got all kinds of junk there, don't I? You can get the amount of border you like, and if it's a little off, that's okay. You can I'll trim that with my scissors in a second. So this is what I like to do if I'm just doing a top and bottom border. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll give that a second to dry so it doesn't move. And then here I wanted to do um, ho 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 for the present, but we also need to put that down with tear and tape, but we'll do that in a second. So I believe in my kit, I'm getting a slew of stuff all over. <laughs> I have a strip here. For my ho 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 now in this card i did the ho 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 in the center and then i thought oh it'd be really cute to put a santa there so i'm going to move the ho 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 to the right side and i can put my santa up here versus here so he's on my stamparatus so i do use all the different corner uh, sides because you can put it in a slightly different place and it won't overlap that. Let me flip this around towards me. Get it in the video for you. All right, so. All right, that one's a little shorter. So I'm going to show you what I would do. You, I would, you don't want to put it here. I'm just going to tell you that. Because this hinge, it'll be hard for you to close the... Uh, apparatus and get the ink off of it in this corner because of the hinge so you want to put it on this side and I'm just eyeballing him let me see if I have a slightly thicker strip this one is one and an eighth so I think I want to use that all right so just put it somewhere on your side close to pick it up and then put him back in the sun in the corner i'm going to put my magnet there and hopefully that's good so i wanted to do this in bermuda bay as well we got an early espresso ink with this kit but that's a nice neutral if you wanted to use the early espresso but i was kind of making this one monochromatic with Bermuda Bay and a little hint of the cherry cobbler. Okay, good. That's a good solid image there. Clean that up. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you my trick with Santa Claus. So he is on my other mat. I think I need a third one of these because I like to tape it down. So let me show you what I did for this. So pretend like that's not on there. Okay, I'll use this one. Okay, I just inked up my Santa Claus. You want to use a nice dark color so the early espresso works great. Okay, and I stamped down right on my mat. And of course, it wasn't in the corner, so I have to do that again. Okay, so you just wipe him up. I'm going to ink him up again. See, I told you, mine shifts, and I don't know what I do to make it shift. Don't hit the reindeer. Okay, so he's nice and centered on... The, the deluxe mat. So then I take my sheet, which I cut off 
the uh, other elements of, and then you can center it right over this. I don't want to take that off because I know it's centered. But that's how you can get your Santa image uh, perfectly centered is put it on your deluxe mat and then line up this this negative piece around your Santa and I taped this down so it wouldn't move so that's why I didn't want to move it and I put it on my other deluxe mat all right so then you'll want to take all your Santas out I think I have one I have one out already. So I think we get six Santas, but of course, since we have the nice outline stamp, we can make more. But I will use this one. Now, whenever you punch these out, you get a little bitty nib on them, and I like to trim those off so it's more rounded. Just be careful when you do that. Now I'm going to stick my Santas, I will put them all in this spot. Okay, and he should stick pretty well, and if he comes loose, um, you can stick him right back in there. But I'm just going to ink him up really well. You know what, I may use, I think I'll look good in espresso. Since you have that, I'll do that. Okay, so this I'm just showing you how to make your Santas. So see, now he's perfect with the outline border. Pretty close to perfect. So you can do all of your Santas like that. Just put them in this one that you lined up and leave your Santa on your plates. And that's how you'll get your Santas centered. Yes, they're clear and you can see through them, but I, I always mess up, so I try this on my Stamparatus. So that's what you can do with all of your, uh, if you have any bundles with dies and stamps, is you can put your stamp here, stamp it on the deluxe mat, center your negative piece there, and then put your piece in. So I hope you like that tip. The other thing, if you have the markers and you see a spot that you don't quite like, you can add a little ink to that. All right. I thought this would be a really quick video, but it's going kind of slow, maybe because of my mistakes. All right. Now, I do not know where my tear and tape is. It escaped me. Now, a couple months ago, I know we had a kit with some strips. So if you have those strips, you can use those as well. I'm going to use my Tombow. So if you're using liquid glue, just be careful and put a thin strip on the very edge. I guess I could have done the glue dots. But this will stay down well. Turn him over so I know he's done. Now I have already cut and did with Memento a slew of Santas. So I scanned the image or you can trace actually well no these I think I stamped in memento because I but I did the same thing I put it in my center of my other stamparatus so I'm gonna color him really quick and you should use a piece of scrap paper when you color with this is my light cherry cobbler and I'm not too worried about shading of his hat so I'm just going to use the one color now if you don't have the um, blends these are the alcohol markers you could um, use your cherry cobbler that's coming next month if you don't have one and you could use your blender pen and color him in. I'm just going to make his pinks a little, his cheeks a little pink. This is Flirty Flamingo. And yeah, the ones that we have, he has a nice colored in face. And I've tried different things. I think I only have the dark crumb cake. And that's because 
They used to just sell them in singles and I bought a dark, but I think that makes them too dark. So I'm just gonna leave him white based. I probably, and in the watercolor pencils I already looked, there's only a early espresso, but let me try that on him. We'll see if we like him. There's an early espresso and I wonder if we go really, really light. He's still pretty dark, but that's, I gave him a little bit of color on the face. Now I'll probably want to take my blender pen and rub that in and let's see if it gets any lighter. Let me check this. Obviously I've tried that before because it was brown. Okay, that actually worked. So if you have your watercolor pencils, in color his face, just put a very light coat of, so this is the one that came with the kit, and this is mine, close enough. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the ho-ho-ho, and I believe I mounted that <clears throat> in Crush Curry, I mean not Crush Curry, Bermuda Bay. So again, I'm gonna come over here and cut my little strips. About five eighths of an inch of Bermuda Bay. And I'm gonna load my, <clears throat> do just like I did on this Mary. I'll put a little strip of blue here. Flip him over without getting the glue all over my hand. I need a thin, thin border. Well, when you put just a little bit of glue, it dries quickly. All right, no problem. We're gonna cover that up. Just do the other side. I want a thin, thin border so that he fits up there. The, my other card, it will fit anyway. Need a little bit of glue there. All right, so. Now we're gonna put him on and try to get an equal border. Okay, so we're gonna let him dry. So now while we have this one, I can get out my scissors and where it hangs over just a tad, I'm gonna trim that off. For this one, I'm gonna turn it that way. So now he fits. All right, so let's see. While this dries, let's work on this part. All right, so there's my Mary. And I want him to just show Christmas. So I'm gonna use my dimensionals. And these are some minis. Actually, where are my bigger ones? And I'll go to my little bucket. Here's some big ones. And I do like to still cut them in half, but they end up, they're still a little bigger than the minis. All right, so I know I'm going to want it on the end. So I put a couple on the bottom. And then for the others, I'm just going to put them in the corners. And down the middle side. I want him to have plenty of support on the card. Kind of folded that one. My fingers are sticky from the glue. And for a good measure, I'm gonna put one in the center up here. All right, take off the backing. I find these little backings all over my house. I guess they stick to my socks or house shoes or something. All right, so let me get him back in the middle here and I'm going to 
put that, let me go ahead and glue this down so that I know it's not going to move. All right, I got him right along the edge. Okay, and now I can take my sky, miss the backing. You can tell by how they shine. They shine different. Okay, those are off, these are off. And I'm gonna put this down where it covers up the Mary. Okay, so now when you flip, you get that. And now we can put our ho-ho-ho on. I just need to trim. this so it's flush and I'm going to glue him across the top so this is my favorite gift card holder go to if I need a gift card holder and a card I just do this and you get two in one you could easily put a strip of DSP or just leave it blank but we're going to put our Santa right there. And I'm not going to put him on dimensionals because this is the inside of the card and I want it to go flat. And then here's my blank Sonic card. I hope that's dry. It should be. So it holds it. And even though it's up top, it stays. So there is my first alternate with this card. Again, um, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss others. I have other ideas that I'm working on as far as either a gift tag or gift card holders with this kit. So I hope you enjoy this alternate. And at the end of my kit, I will know the price for my add-on kit if you want to get any of these extra materials. So thanks for watching today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Kind comments are always appreciated. Sorry for all the mistakes and uh, miscuts that I did on this video, but you know, those things happen. And even when I think I have it all ready, there is always something. So this one just had a few more somethings go wrong. So until the next time, we'll see you again. Thanks for joining.